So, uh, today uh, on Game Talk, we are going to be talking about Board Blitz, a Mario Party S game with a high emphasis on mini games. Uh, today, I have with me Ice Lion, uh, another streamer and uh, other hosts. Then I also have DDR Cat, a programmer from the project, Peter, the lead designer from the project, and Edgar, the lead programmer. So, welcome, guys. Hey, hello. Um,. So, uh, I guess without further ado, let's uh, first show everybody the trailer um, from the Kickstarter campaign. We'll just pan you guys right real quick over to that. trailer is over and I forgot to turn off the, the numbers so you guys are gonna count in one two three and four again uh, but a mi minor technical difficulty there uh, all right so uh, anything you want to tell us you know before we get into the questions anything you guys want to uh, state uh, go ahead Edgar no. go ahead Peter <laughs> no, I, on, this is what Ed can pass it on to me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't have anything to... Well, you know what? One thing I, I didn't put on the questions. How about a little uh, background? Where are you guys all from? I'm from I'm from uh, upstate New York, so I'm in the East Time Zone. We're a little bit ways away. This is like world called connecting, so... Uh, yeah. I guess we'll just go from red, then green, blue, yellow. So Ice, uh, where, where are you from? Sure. Ice, uh, still from northeast Tennessee, so east time zone as well. You right. have to tell me which color I am. I don't know. You are green, cat. You are next. Oh, I'm next. Uh, <laughs> so I'm all the way from over in England. All the way. Across the ponds. And then, uh, Peter, you are from? I'm from Sweden. So more, further across the ponds. <laughs> and then, Edgar, you're a little bit closer to me and Ice, I believe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we go back across the pond, and I'm in Mexico City. Yep, so we got three in the Americas and two in uh, Europe and the UK. As viewers, thanks Ice, and thanks Peter and Kat and Edgar. I really appreciate you all joining the show. Um, so I, I guess the first question I had is uh, when was... Because if everybody doesn't know, these are the same guys that worked on Mega Man 2.5. Uh, the, the unofficial fan-made game that a lot of people like... All right, so Mighty Number no. Nine was supposed to be his first successor that uh, KG made, which was better better than nothing in his own words. But this is the one I think people actually liked as a spirit successor. And like, it, it, for me, I, I I know you guys have been working on nine years, and I'm sorry to say, but I really didn't know it was out until a week before it was out, like the official 1.0 release. I saw it in Discord, and I was like, hey, I'll try it. Why not? It looks really. F I liked how it, the the screen moved and tilted and everything. It was really fun. So that's this is the same team that did that, and this is their next project. Um, so like, when was the first question? Question number one. When was the concept for Board Blitz created? Like, was this something that happened while you're also working on that project? Because I know that's still ongoing somewhat. Um. So Board Blitz was um, was thought up whilst we were still. I think it was not too long after we put Beta Four out of Mega Man 2.5D. Um, it was around that time. Uh, I presented sort of the loose concept that eventually became uh, Board Blitz to the guys, and I said, "Look, yeah. I've always told myself if we were ever gonna, if, if I was ever gonna get into a, like a programming team or something like that, I would like to do this." Um, and then we sort of went back and forth a bit, saying, "Hey, you know, what would work, what wouldn't work." Um, ultimately, we started what like we still obviously worked on 2.5D because hey, it's released. Um, but uh, we went back and forth along the road, and f 
from there just kind of figured out what we think could be a good idea for a, for a project. So when you um, when you guys had originally started speaking about Board Blitz, did it originally start as a party game, or did it derive yeah. from something different? It it immediately started as a party game, um, and it was literally as as we as you can kind of get a hint from with the trailers and stuff. It was um, the fact that you know it's a party game that you can play with your friends online. It was something that I always had a, a huge frustration factor for because there's. There is a bunch of games that will capture like the mini game idea. There is like Marooners, which is uh, a game that you can get on Steam, which has a bunch of little mini games. It's really kind of fun. Um, but nothing captures the, the united package of Mario Party Online or anything like that. Um, and that's, I think, that's where a lot of games drop the ball. Is like they go, here's a bunch of little neat mini games, but that's kind of all there is to it. Obviously, mini games make up what Mario Party is predominantly. Yeah, I think it was about uh, three years ago that we first started started thinking about it. So, like I said, we were still working on, on Mega Man at the time. So basically, while we were doing that, we were like going through a couple of, of ideas, like what should our next next project be, and uh, we ended up with with Board Blitz because it just seemed like you know there there's nothing like it really for for the PC uh, so it just seemed like it would be a great great game to have on there and especially with with online play oh that's interesting cuz i i'm me myself i'm not too much of a PC gamer and i think ice is also he's very loyal to his consoles and he's got its whole setup for uh, to keep all that great quality for his streams um, I was just like more so just even for console online play, you know, I know like some games are, are multi multi platform like uh, um, What's that car game? Uh, Rocket, League. Rocket League. Yeah, something like that. That'd be super interesting I, I mean, I don't know how I have no know nothing about online networking for like gaming Wise, so I'm not sure what that would be but like just just yeah in the sense of just online because I was talking to Ice about this, and like a lot of streamers like to interact with their communities, whether that be with like a, a game night, kind of with like Jackbox, or or some, or like some people do like the Rabbids like video and kind of like a, a video night. But like this, especially with like because you um you listed that you're gonna have both like you know a traditional like board game, you have like you know X amount of turns and whatnot. But you also said there'd be like just you can just play mini games, and I I could really see that playing with viewers and like you know just swapping out viewers every so mini games, and that would just be just a great awesome thing to interact as as streamers to our audiences and stuff like that. So. That is uh... especially with if we can get to do it. We've also mentioned on the Kickstarter we can't, we cannot, cannot promise this, but we absolutely do want to try and do what we call a one ticket to play system. So quite literally, what Jabbot does is they get you to play through a web browser using one game copy. Mm -hmm. um, that same concept we want to try and bring to Boardless. So you'd be able to download the game for free, but you won't be able to play it unless you have someone who has purchased the game. Oh, but that's you'll be excellent. able to interact with your viewers, so you'll be able to say, oh, let, let's play Board Blitz tonight, and everyone's like, oh, I don't own it. It's like, you don't have to own it, just download it and we'll play, and it's all good. That is the basic idea that we would really like to do, and we do want to try and make it platform where possible, uh, multi-platform where possible. So you'd be able to have your friend who has a PlayStation 4, in theory, who would be able to play with you on the PC, who's also, like, and you've got, they've got a friend who's got an Xbox, uh, we can't promise that because um, obviously PlayStation, uh, well Sony, are not happy with networking with 360 element. Uh, well, with the with Microsoft at the minute, um, so we can't promise that would be a thing. But where possible, we sure as hell want to get as many of them playing together as nicely as possible as we can. Sure. So, so speaking of of you know all these features that you were wanting to implement into the game, uh, did anybody's role change, or is everybody pretty much using the same role that they did for Mega Man Two Point Five D? Yeah, I think, I think that has the same. Yeah. Right. And I don't think I yeah. don't think anyone's really changed. Ed, Edgar's taken on more stress, if anything. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I would say networking is a, a very unique uh, challenge um, coming from a single player game to that. Edgar, have you had any, um, any experience with networking beforehand? 
Uh, yes, I've, I have experience with networking, but mostly for uh, non-game applications. Uh, but in terms of games, uh, I've had a few demos or uh, prototypes, and they seem to work. But uh, yeah, nothing in, uh, in this scale. Or we want to have like different uh, people playing and everything running at the same time. Um, thankfully, apparently, uh, Steam is going to help a lot with those issues. So that's why we are also going for Steam, because uh, they handle all the matchmaking stuff, so we don't really need to do anything about it. So that's quite, quite convenient. Yeah, agreed. Um, in our sort of internal dev build, where you do already have the like an absolute bare bones working copy, where me and Peter are running around, running into each other, and shoving each other off the platform. So we have the basic premise there already, which is nice. That is good. It was nice to just see it work or it like so quickly versus how long it took for 2.5 D to just actually be playable. <laughs> It's actually, thank thank God that we we switch engines to Unreal because yeah, mm. with, our, with our Mega Man 2.5D engine, having uh, network capability will require me to do that to do everything from scratch. Oh. So, yeah, so okay. we are happy that we actually switched. Okay, and uh, I, uh, one thing I was I was kind of curious about, um, as you saw like some of the characters on, on the little screen down there in the bottom left, like when. I, I, at first, I thought, Peter, did you didn't did you design these characters or come with the concepts? Because I was gonna ask, like, if if you or whomever uh, drew them, like, did they know what they were gonna be? Like, did they know that girl was gonna be a playable character, or the little shopkeeper was gonna be the shopkeeper, or did like roles change at all? Like, you thought this was gonna be NPC, but then became a main character, or vice versa? So I wish I would come up with the designs because I really like them. But I can't take the, the credit for it. It's actually, I believe it was one of Edgar's friends, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that uh, pretty much... Well, we went to this guy and, and pretty much said that, you know, we're looking to, to do, do something in the style of uh, kind of the, the Wind Waker. You know, in terms of um, just my character proportions and, and going with that cell shaded look. Uh, so we gave him some some things to go on, and then pretty much just uh, let him do do whatever he wanted to. And he he came up with a couple of suggestions just for characters, and we we ended up yeah, we went back and forth and, and refined a couple of things. And so we pretty much actually started from there, really, and then uh, then we kind of just went through all of his his suggestions and try to pick out characters that we think could be a could be a good fit for the game uh, pretty much yeah well although i think that you did design the shopkeeper right <laughs> yeah yeah I, I should mention that a couple of the minor minor characters uh, are by by me but the the four main main characters the playable ones so so by the by Edgar's. You were just like make us four more four protagonists that'd be playable. So like that was his like instructions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's so... it, it's interesting that you say uh uh they were kind of like inspired or a little bit by uh by uh oh my god. Uh Wind Waker. I was gonna say Breath of the Wild there for a second, like nope, that's not the right one. But uh yeah, like some of the characters look like straight out like I remember there was like a little kid on the islands, um, and it, he'd always have like snot dripping from his yeah. nose or whatever. And you could kind of see like a little bit in the faces I I'm not sure like the eyes just look a little similar, but that, they really did capture that and I think it really fits well with like this sort of atmosphere as uh, like a game uh you know, game world and all that. Yeah, I think so and there's well there are a couple of reasons for it. And one is just that I I've been a huge fan of of that uh, style, just ever since since Wind Waker came out, so I just I, I just I think it's pretty timeless. So so you know that's that's part of it. But then I mean, well we're a small team, so by by using a style like this, we can produce assets a lot quicker compared to if we were going for something more detailed. You know, with with like really really detailed textures and stuff like that. 
Absolutely. And, you know, considering we're, I mean, we got to produce a lot of mini games and boards. So, I mean, it makes a, a massive difference uh, just in, in how much time it takes. And uh, there are, are some other benefits as well, like since um, well you often you've got like hectic mini games going on and just with this kind of style it, it's easier to see what's going on so agreed and i think that um you know a style like this lends to a product constantly um staying relevant as you said i think a lot of times when you make product that's um photo realistic or anything like that it changes over time um and it, as I said, it kind of loses some of its quality where something like this will, will stay around for a, for a lot longer. Um, so, so speaking of that, you know, um, what is the process that you guys use to create the game board for the uh, story mode? Well, basically we started with just uh, the themes of the boards. So, you know, we, we know that we want this kind of like the, the easy board or the, like the, the starter board. That's kind of you know basic in, in how it works. So we, we start with that one and um, and just try to come up with a good theme for it. So we, we start with the themes really and then then build the the specific mechanics for each board like around the theme pretty much. So for example, I ha have the idea of, of a casino theme board. So then then it's. Well, it, it's pretty obvious that you're gonna want like you're gonna want slot machines and uh, roulette wheels and stuff like that. So, but that, that's pretty much the the process there, really. Uh, yeah. So it's so it's a theme, and then uh, like how, like how do you know like whether to make it go around in a square like Monopoly or to make like pathways? You just kind of is that just like comes later? Like somebody's like, hey, why don't we just put a fork in the road here? One goes like through like a, a treacherous path, but it's quicker. But there's like more like I don't know, uh, red spaces or something. If red spaces are bad, I I don't know. But um... well, for the like for the, the actual layout, that's still that's still really early. Oh okay. We haven't done a lot of work there really. I mean, I've been looking a lot at at the, the Mario Party games on those boards to to get like some some idea of it. Uh, but uh, basically so far you know we haven't really gotten into that yet that much other than we, we know like about how many how many like squares we want per board and stuff like that but, but yeah the actual layout that comes that comes later we do have like a, a prototype board that we're using to, like, just for for testing purposes but okay so this this might be more a question for Edgar, but from a technical like programming standpoint, what are the differences or, or, or challenges uh, more ever from like kind of going from a uh, platformer in Mega Man 2.5D to doing a completely different game in, in, a, in a party like game? Yes. Oh, oh God. Well, pretty much uh, everything is different now. Um, well, first of all, we switch uh, engines. Since uh, we started with our own developed engine for Super and 5D, so uh, we have functionality for adding enemies and stages and everything else, but everything is done inside an XML file, so we have no visual editor for it. So Peter has to import the stuff from Maya, and then I don't know. He has to set a lot of a bunch of values inside this text file and somehow see how it works, which. I can assume it's a lot of work, but but now we have a Unreal Engine which has a visual editor, so that's very very convenient. But the problem is that, uh, well, since we have like 50 different mini games, we pretty much have to code uh, different characters and game mechanics for each of one of these mini games. So it, every mini game requires uh, a lot of work, like. Uh, how the camera is going to move, how the characters are going to behave, if the characters are in the screen or not. Um, everything is pretty much like a, well, a mini game on its own. So it's like a completely isolated module uh, separated from the main board game. So, uh, and on top of that, we have the online 
connectivities. So pretty much everything changed. I think it's for the best because um, adding stuff or changing it now it's gonna be way way easier for Peter because he now can easily test it without having to compile everything every time. But uh, for me, while well, it's a complete change, the camera is different, the uh, game mechanics are different, uh, the coding language is different. So to me, it's also it's a lot of work, but it's a very refreshing change after working uh, with XNA and C Sharp for like eight, seven years in Mega Man 2.5D. Now we're going back to C++ and Blueprint in Unreal, <laughs> which is a welcome change. And yeah, I like uh, learning new things. So yeah, it, there's a lot of differences, a lot of work to do, but uh, we're happy to do it. So speaking of that, um, you know, with the creation process for the mini games, um, is it a joint effort, or do you guys assign particular members of the team to come up with each of the concepts for the boards where you had mentioned like having a casino theme and things like that? We've kind of just all sort of submitted ideas um, into like a, an idea hat, as it were, and um, that you know, like I would put across, oh, I think this mini game idea would be neat. Uh, Peter turned around and says, oh, I really, really remember enjoying this out of this <laughs> game, so we could maybe make a mini game out of it. Um, like, I think Edgar, if I, I could be wrong of who submitted this one now, but I think it was Edgar that put across the um, the Micro Machines idea. Oh, uh, okay. Um, like, the, the one where you got the little race cars going around, which obviously looks inspired by Micro Machines. Um, I think Peter's was the, the Monkey Ball one, um, if memory serves. And so it's kind of like a, oh, what, what do we think would be fun as a small self-contained game? Uh, and then see if it, like, if we can, like, prod at the idea and see if it stick holds up. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> also, like, I mean, our, our, our approach, uh, like, with this game is it, pretty much that we want it to be kind of a, kind of like a, a greatest hits party game, in a sense, because... Like if you look at the Mario Party games, for example, it, it seems that like you've got a couple of like fan favorites, but then then they're just kind of tossed out and you know for the, the next game. Uh, so I mean, we we pretty much want to look at uh, some of the most popular party games and uh, and uh, do our takes on on those popular mini games, really. We do want to have like completely original ones as well, and we do want to make sure that we don't like stick too close to, to the originals. <laughs> Pick your own spin on it. But, but still, you know, we, yeah, because it feels a little like like you've got you you've got like there's a lot of good mini games, but they they're spread out in different different party games. So we just like we really want to have a. A really strong lineup of mini games that people remember pretty much from from those old party games. Excellent. Uh, I'm sorry, just like Dad there. Yeah, I, I think we try to come up with uh, all of us with ideas. Although honestly, I think like ninety percent of them have come from Peter right now. Uh, but we also try to have a balance of them. Like we have. Uh, Mini games that require skill, some that are a little bit more like luck based. Or I'm a huge fan of those mini games where you can just steal coins from your other partners, like grab back in Mario Party. So I try to sort of try to push for that kind of mini games. But ideally, we try to we want to have a balance of all of them, so it's a little bit for everyone. But we are not too fond of the purely random mini games, so I think we all try to avoid them. Yeah, that was that was sort of one thing we did sort of mention quite early on. Is like we want to try and keep the uh, the the rogue element out of winning as low as possible. There's <laughs> yeah, just nothing more soul crushing yeah. than getting right to the end of the game and it's like, oh, I'm almost won, and then two three turns, you you're you're in last place now. It's like, oh, we, we do want to have a, a bigger emphasis on on skill versus luck. Uh, so the the idea that we that we have right now is. That uh, what well, there's there's there will still be like some mini games that would be 
either like entirely luck based or at least you know largely luck based. But the, the idea is that uh, the luck will will depend more on on the board that you play. So for example, we we're considering having like a, a more chaotic board. That's pretty much you know if, if you want like a more luck based game, then you know go for this board. Yeah. And perhaps we'd be able to uh, achieve achieve that through like game settings and stuff. Lucky like, land or lucky worlds. Yeah. <laughs> As you were saying, nothing's more soul crushing than you know losing to to luck, unless you have a sort of a a stealing element to the advantage points. I think you call them because mm. uh, that does. Uh, does uh, tension some friendships or relationships as as the plentiful of memes you've probably seen go go around. Um, yeah. uh, so on that note, on like uh, mini games and, and ha you know who decides that, um, like many mini games generally derive at its core from sort of childhood playground games like rock paper scissors or, or like that type of stuff. And a lot of you, uh, as we mentioned from Screwbit Gaming or Screwbit Games, excuse me, um, you know, uh, with Edgar in Mexico, Peter in uh, Sweden, and Cat in the UK, you know, s cultural differences. Maybe you have like a little bit different, a uh, little different childhood. Uh, games that you played when you were younger so do you guys like bring that to the table at all and incorporate a little bit of your cultural background in like um you know the mini games aspect at all i mean so far we haven't because basically so far we've we've drawn more from from games really yeah. from uh, i know for the ones that i've i've come up with at least so far a lot of it comes from like you know, I used to play this when when I was younger. You know, it would be cool to to make kind of a mini game based off of this. So I think it's more it, it's more from from games actually so far. But but I should say that you know we haven't finalized uh, the mini games yet either. There are a couple of ones that we know we, we want to have we want to have in the game. But I think there are a couple of, of mini games that. Once we get to prototyping them, we'll see, you know, the, like if they actually work or not. So, yeah, there's there's some stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. Okay. we're drawn more from from games. Yeah, also, we can always try to include the Mexican sombreros for the characters. Is the hat? <laughs> I was just thinking, like how uh, you know Halloween is so much different from like Day of the Dead in 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 like uh, Mexico. Like, I, I my first thing I think of is like uh, what was it Gr Grim Fandango? Like that always screams like Day of the Dead to me. Um, that's an old. I think they may be remade. I can't remember or or their Kickstarter. Okay, but uh, yeah, just like you know that sort of difference and. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know what, what what you like, what sort of playground games you have, like in Sweden, or I don't really know anything about the UK. But I figured that since you know America and and the UK do share somewhat of a history, that maybe some of them are similar. Although uh, you guys still call football uh, wrong, uh, soccer. Uh, you, mean you guys call it wrong. The ball the ball <laughs> is a, a foot long, sir, twelve inches, and there you go. Yours is not. Your yours is a maybe circular. That's, maybe that's just size of like <laughs> the confidentiality sort of uh, <laughs> cover there. So uh, one of the things, you know, obviously that we have have spoke about is the online capabilities of being able to play with friends. Uh, you know, sometimes st you still have that moment where all your friends get over as like a work party or just have a couple of friends come over to hang out, have a fire. Are you guys trying to incorporate couch co-op as well as a feature? Yes. Yeah. Oh, um, in fact, recently, um, Ed can manage to find a good little dev kit that we should be able to use to make it that rather than needing like controllers or anything to be able to play with on the PC with your friends, we might be able to actually literally go Jackbox style and have mobile phones or something like that. Cool. Anything with a browser become an actual controller for the, for, for the game. Yeah, we want to be able to have a mix of coach co-op and online co-op and pretty much any combination of them. And well, our idea is also that if you're playing online and one of the players just wants to disconnect, then he can be replaced by an NPC. And then later if we can allow the possibility that maybe someone wants to join in the middle of the game 
or if you're in a hurry, you can just join in a little bit, play some mini games, and then you disconnect, and then maybe someone else will take your place, or I don't know, if you're playing and someone disconnects, but then you get another guest in your house, he can take over the place of the player that disconnected, that, that was being controlled by an NPC, and now he's controlling that character. So we want to yeah, we want to minimize the um, well, the annoyingness of being playing online, and then. A person thinks he's gonna lose and then he disconnects. So we don't want to ruin the experience for everyone. So we just want to continue the game as smooth as possible. Yeah, using AI or whatever. Sure, so almost kind of like a, uh, a drop-in or drop-out feature that you would kind of see in some of the LEGO games or, or things yeah. like that, like Diablo. Okay, very cool. No, I think that's great. Um, so with an extension of that question, um, Will you be able, as you said, to have a couple people on same console and internet to fill the rest? Is kind of what you were saying. Should be what we're looking to do. Yes. Very cool. Very very cool. So, um, you know, like with Mario Party, it wasn't like the first one though. Like, you know, we all knew what Mario was about, saving Princess Peach, and like Bowser kind of being the main villain. Will there be like any type of plot line or storyline? Like, not really a story mode, but like. Are we going to see, like, a familiar antagonist throughout, like, maybe the boards or something like that? Or is... I don't even know if there is an antagonist. Or is it just, like, literally mini-games and, you know, you go around the board? No, we we do have... I should say, we, we don't have a story mode planned. And the main reason, really, is that, you know, we're such a tiny team that we we really need to focus on on everything else. Okay. Uh, so that's yeah, that's really the the main reason. Uh, I could imagine that if if we are able to to go ahead with it, and if there's like a demand for for a mode like that, that we could eventually look at maybe adding one. But uh, as of right now, we we don't have any plans for it. Uh, but what we do have is we do have like a, a Bowser type antagonist that just you know pops up and makes your life miserable so we we, <laughs> we we gotta have that really so and, yeah, and they it, stole an office photo of me and put me in the game <laughs> yeah, yeah. no but we, we're, the, and we're just gonna we're gonna make him as as annoying as we possibly can you know it's 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 gonna be great but yeah so so speaking of uh, just having that uh, random antagonist and moment there, um, if you were all to, to play, you know, all is fair, I love war and party games, uh, which member of the team would you say is most likely to backstab the rest of you? Oh, man. Me. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm doing them probably. Yeah. I mean... I'm going to vote for Cat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be as loyal as possible, so if we have an agreement or a truce or whatever, I'm going to... Fulfill it to the end. So in future, <laughs> that way in the future games, people know to protect. Uh, you know, not to backstab you early because they'll, they'll know you're a man of your word or whatnot. <laughs> 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 Although, like you know, cat in the next board, you might be like, I'm not sure he'll be so trustworthy. I'm gonna like you know keep both eyes open. Um. So uh, another thing. So online, we're one one last bit to online. Uh, will there be like some more of like a lobby matchmaking system or do you have to like know who you're going to play with and you kind of open up a room and they join in? I, no, we're going, yeah. huh? I mean, I was gonna, I was thinking that it's it's going to be difficult to really say for now due to the whole um, uh, it's going to be it's going to be difficult to say in this in a solid fashion because of the fact that if the one ticket to play system does go ahead, then you're obviously going to need to be able to know the code to be able to play online, kind of like a temporary CD key, it's effectively. Um, whereas, like, I don't imagine it'd be too difficult to provide sort of random matchmaking between people that do own the game. Oh, yeah. Um, so we could probably make a good go of it, but I'm not certain on how well it would work. It, it It's, right now, it's it's entirely possible. Um, the in the prototype that we have, uh, Peter can see that I'm playing and just literally select join, and boom, he connects to me. So it's not unfeasible to be doing, but we're not sure. I think. Okay. Ed, Ed, Ed is welcome to. 
So, uh, well, at least for TC, which is our current goal, yes, we plan to have uh, lobby matchmaking. We will need to figure out what to do with that um, with that party mode where only one player needs a key. But the idea is to have um, matchmaking with lobbies, so you can join a lobby or you can invite someone and create mm. your own lobby, and then you can decide if you want people to be able to join to them to your to your lobby or if you want to make it private. Thankfully, we're going to use uh, Steam work for it, so basically the whole Steam framework. So it's going to be pretty similar to how other Steam games work. Uh, the problem, or what we are still unsure, is if we manage to be accepted to polish it in, I don't know, the Nintendo Switch or PS4 later on, how, if that will change. But because then we will be a little bit bounded by their own online systems. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I have no clue how they work, but at least for PC, it's going to work uh, with the Steam works. So it's going to have a matchmaking system provided by Steam itself. Ooh. And yeah, so you can create your own lobbies, join join other uh, players if you want. You can also have your private lobbies. It's very similar to other Steam games. Really, really cool. I guess a, uh, uh, another question I would have for you all, and granted this may be a little bit harder because you guys were talking about the uh, almost like the uh, one to play system. Um, would you ever consider having leaderboards? Because a lot of times people really love to have leaderboards for things like this based mm -hmm. off of maybe total coin value or anything like that. So people can be competitive even if they don't necessarily know each other uh, to kind of, you know, kind of spur on that competition. That sounds entirely doable. Um... Because it'd be statistical data that you could gather, so it could be a thing that if you own it, you could submit your data to the leaderboards if you want to, just for a sort of bragging rights. If pe if people are interested in that, I, I don't imagine it'd be too difficult. To do. Yeah, we haven't considered that option, but as you said, it's not really that difficult to add. And yeah, if people are interested in into it, or yeah, we can sort of easily do that for them and. As long as uh, they want to be competitive, go for it. In uh, this is just like I guess another follow up, but uh, like in your last game, your achievements were really like worthwhile for me doing. It wasn't just like oh, I get a trophy or I get a score, like a, a, a Xbox gamer score or whatever it's called, or achievement. Um, it was actually stuff that I could actually use in the, in my next playthrough of the game or or just more content to the game in general so like i know i think you guys said you're gonna have hats or maybe aesthetics that you're gonna have and anything else like well i guess or you could just say yes we have stuff planned if you don't want to get too much stuff away but uh any other like sort of achievement like unlockable stuff uh we don't have any unlockables planned right now but that's something like well then that's just something that we're gonna have to have to look at like what time of what kind of time do we have? Uh, so we want to make sure that we focus really on on the like main main game first and get all of that going. You know, make sure we we've got like solid boards, mini games, and everything, so that we don't try to to do like too much and end up <laughs> messing it up. You know, we so we, we we want to try and and avoid like feature loads. So we're kind of already <laughs> featured it. But, yeah. But uh, because yeah, that's something that we that we learn too with with Mega Man. How uh, you know it's it's so easy to to get into this way of like well, th this would be cool to add, you know, and and this this would be cool to add. <laughs> you know, it, it shouldn't take very long, but then when you add it all together, you know, it, it ends up like delaying it like half a year. Oh yeah. It could so, be the the cosmetics that we have. You start off with some um, some available and some unlocked throughout gameplay. Um, yeah, it's not really set in stone, so there there is the possibility of that. Yeah, yeah, we we just don't know yet. Yeah, I think in my mind it's gonna be a little bit similar to party party. That maybe you start with a, I don't know, not all the boards, but you just play once or twice, and then oh, you have another board available mm. now, and maybe some. More obscure mini games get unlocked by, I don't know, playing other mini games or can you have played like 
30 or 40 different mini games, then you can unlock the new the next patch. There's a but, bunch of other um, little ideas we could do as well. Like um, you could have unlockable soundtracks for for boards. So high bass, they have like one or two songs, you know, ones that are intended for it. But then, if you really like to sort of put your own spice on a stage, or you just really like a particular song a bit more. Um, you could unlock a song and have that for that board instead on your end. Uh, oh. That could be another thing. Or yeah. maybe, yeah. Or maybe just um, different variations per mini game. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. One you played once or twice, or I don't know, you get a certain amount of time in the micro machines mini game. Then you unlock the next, um, the next variation. So stuff like that. I think it's gonna work. Yeah, we'll just have to see like what what makes well. First of all, like what kind of time we have for it, yeah. And then just what what makes what makes sense to have, uh, considering it, it's a party game. Like it, it's possible that, that unlockables lend themselves a bit better to, to something like Mega Man, but yeah. but like again, we haven't really we haven't really gone into it yet, you know. Either so we'll just have to have to see what happens, but. You know, overall, I think we're all all fan of of unlockable. Yeah, Ooh. worth I worthwhile. It's fun, right? <laughs> yeah, like because a lot a lot of days it's um it's usually just like like sketches or something like you know which is cool. Some people really like that, but like other people just like oh I I spent like you know three hours trying to do this really hard achievement and I just get a picture for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. So uh. I still have them. No, 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 no! You keep going with that thought. Okay. Uh, we still have the thing with the with the hats or uh, different unlockables that we want to have for uh, aesthetic reasons. So, yeah, we're planning also some of them can be unlockable. Maybe we can try to sell some of them, similar to Team Fortress 2 or Street Fighter 5. Mm. So, so they're not going to affect the gameplay because that would be uh, false. Yeah. I, th I think no one likes to to need to pay to get uh, improvements in your game. Yeah. Right? So we, we we just want to keep them as an aesthetic thing. But yeah, we can also try to unlock that based on achievement or if you have a very good time or score in a certain mini game. All right. Um, last thing, I'm just gonna make the little uh, little trailer thing go down for a second. I'm actually gonna put up your guys' uh, characters. I'm not sure if you can see it. But I think this this is just the the chibi art you sent me, Peter. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, or is it chibi? I, I've I'm always okay. Um, uh, do, anything you want to like? Do you want to introduce us to your your cast? We got uh, the the boy with the red hat. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so we we have our characters, but but I mean, basically the the idea is that you know we have. We went with we wanted kind of like we wanted to make sure we had like different different like body types for example so uh, should I say like they're they're like since since they're, we we're not planning on making any any story mode so the characters aren't really like super important the way I see it at least not not that way you know. Um, so I'm not sure if there's if there's too much to Does that... really, really say about them, um, you know. But but uh, well, uh, we can say that like to the to the left from the left to right there we have first uh, our four playable characters, and uh, then uh, we've got our like Bowser type guy there with uh, the fox mask, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to to coming up with with stuff for him because yeah, that's that's gonna be cool. He looks like a trickster of, of some sorts. Yeah. Yeah, a schemer. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much a, a trickster uh, type. But uh, well, let's go through them anyway. You know, from from left there we have pretty much our that's our our link really. <laughs> it's kind of our our like game mascot, I guess you could you could call him. Then we have uh, to the right of him. We have Nova. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had just like a fem at least one female character, and uh, we wanted to, to have someone that just <laughs> seemed like kind of a badass, you know. 
Because if you, if you look at the Mario part or really the Mario game, you have well, there, there's a lot of princesses. Yeah. Uh, so we just wanted to to have something a little a little different. Uh, a bit more confident. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. And uh, so, and it, it's a nice contrast to to the like the main character because he's kind of kind of low confidence. Yeah. Kind of low, low self-esteem. It's just a nice contrast to have her be just like, yeah. Have She's gonna beat back. you up and then take your lunch money. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> then, uh, then we've got our our big muscly dude, and um, yeah, he's he's pretty much uh, the, the big and strong guy, <laughs> really. Uh, but he's a soft dude as well. So, like in, in Mario Party, you have your Donkey Kong character. We all just wanted to have like our we wanted to have our, our Donkey Kong really. <laughs> just just really just really big and intimidating. Uh then then lastly we have got our our kind of bad guy, Blight, who's just is the smallest. I mean they're all pretty small. Well not not So like a Napoleon complex type I mean, deal. <laughs> yeah, but he's like the, the tiny, tiny, tiny villain, pretty much. So, and then well, the guy to the to the right, rightmost there is is our our shopkeeper. So he'll he'll be running the the item shops in the game, pretty much. It makes me and think he's inspired by Mr. Miyagi or something. <laughs> yeah, he's got that weird, weird Mr. Miyagi thing yeah. going on there. Like. So, I wonder if it'll like charge, uh, crank up the prices for like certain boards because of uh, you know shipping and all that. Some, some cool ideas actually for for it. But, yeah, so we'll see. Awesome. And uh, I, I almost like totally slipped. So you, you actually have somebody working because on, on your other game, I think you just had like a whole bunch of uh, fan made re uh, reversions of music. So this one, do you actually have somebody working on the music, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We have help from uh, Thomas Blackburn, who who also did the uh, remixes actually for for Mega Man. Oh. Uh, so he, he's helping us out again. Yeah, it was really um, fun how he ended up in part of the team. He, um, I think it was just after Beta Three that we put out. He um, he saw that we were planning uh, Splash Woman in there, and um, oh no, yeah, Splash Woman would have been in at that point. And uh, she didn't actually have a, we didn't actually have a remix stage for her, um, and he, he just kind of posted on forum and say, hey, I love your game. Um, I thought it'd be really neat if you had a remix, so I made one, um, and it was a really nice one. Uh, it needed a little adjustment, but we said, hey, like this guy's really passionate. He's really good at music, um, and he and he just sat there and blitzed through making a bunch of them just out of just out of pure passion. Like he was, he blasted through making all the verses, music tracks before we'd even finished the stages, yeah. um, and that was so that was really really cool, um, and it was nice to have someone with so much passion on the project, like to to invite onto the project as well. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's how our our team has pretty much like worked because like we started off with with me and Edgar back in whatever it was, you know, a long time ago. <laughs> and then, then like you that. know, someone, someone comes along, like Cat comes along and, you know, says he's, he's a fan of the game and, you know, and ends up helping out with it. And it's been the, pretty much the same for everyone that's, that's joined. Right now we're, I think we're like six, seven people. And on yeah. top of that, we've got We've actually got a guy working at Singa, Singa Games, who's who's helping us out with some of the the modeling and animation for for board lists. So yeah, I'll just play. A, a, you guys won't be here, but the the viewers will be out. a little a few samples. I got like on your uh, Kickstarter page, you got both Embark, uh, which I'll play right now, which which is very upbeat and kind of like adventurous. I mean, just as the title would say, Embark. Um, and then also you have a digital desert, which I'm going to guess is probably for like one of your board themes. I mean, it's such a, unless that's just really in, in just the name of the song, it, it sounds like 
really uh, electric and and kind of like old old uh, I don't know maybe like old Sega a little bit like the kind of yeah. video game metallic tones. I, I'm really really a fan of both of them. I'm, I'm glad you guys. Uh... No, he's he's come up with some some great stuff you know so far, and I don't think any of the tracks are necessarily like finalized. But I mean, so far it's it's really good stuff. It, it really ties. It's a little different compared to to Mega Man because like a lot of the stuff that we want for board lists is like you gotta be able to like loop it without getting tired of it. So like yeah. it's more, <laughs> it's a bit more. I don't know what to say, but like like kind more of like Mario music, where Mario music, music it has to be able to loop. Uh, yeah. Like the, the musician of the Mario uh, tracks. Um, the reason he makes his music not so tiring, and this is going to sound crazy, um, is he legitimately sits there with a track that he's working on, on a loop for 14 hours. If he's not tired of it by the end of that, then he likes it. That's, that's crazy. In my they should have Twitch back then, just a, a stream of a guy watch, uh, listening to his own music for 14 hours, see how yeah. he holds up. <laughs> Alright then, um... So uh, I, I guess that will pretty much uh, conclude. Unless uh, any guys have any concluding statements or, or so, um, where's the best place to uh, get get uh, news for you? Um, I'll, I'll have the Kickstarter link. Uh, I'll provide that uh, in a second. Um, I would say both. Of, obviously, social media is like our, our Facebook page, our Twitter page, um, or if you're just looking to chat with us as we're doing stuff, uh, we have opened up our Discord to the public. So people can get you know direct word from us um, where possible. Obviously, we we can't be there twenty four seven. But yep. um, so you know, or you know, even if it's just a oh, we want to hang out with people because they seem really nice, then you know we're not opposed to that. Okay. So um, so uh, you're at the same thing as the handle up there, right? At DDR Cat uh, for for Twitter. Uh, yeah, or our our company one, which is uh, at Screwbit Games. All right, and then uh, Peter is. Uh... Well, mine would be at Mega Man Two Five. Yeah, at Mega, at Mega Man Two Five D. Yeah. <laughs> I just putting that all up. And do you have a Twitter at all, Edgar? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'll just write it down in the chat, I guess. All right. Uh, Edgar Omar MX. Be it. Oh, you linked it, and now you got timed out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bad. Sorry. That's fine. Okay. I can recover it. Okay. There, there you go. I thought you were going to put the link, too. I'm like, oh, now you're gone, too. Yeah, I have to, like, permit <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Probably should think about this stuff ahead of time. Well, there you go, guys. Um... I'm just gonna pan us over to the, uh, or and also thank you, thank you, uh, Ice, for for coming out and uh, being the co-host with me. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys, and and thank you the the team from Screwbit to to show up and and talk to our fans about it. And, and Ice does a bunch of retro playthroughs on on Twitch here, with, same as his handle up there at IceLine84. I believe your Twitter is the same. Uh, it's Bowen underscore Tim. Hey, yeah, just put that. Just don't put a link. We don't want you getting timed out too. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pass over to our credits thing. Um, I, as I said, I have the Kickstarter link in there. Um, feel free to look at that. Uh, here's their, their Twitter, and they also have a Discord. I, I put the link up there too. Um, you will have to be a part, member of it for, I think, about 10 minutes before you can talk. You can look, you just can't speak for those 10 minutes. But, uh, really appreciate everybody coming out today, um, from, from all the, uh, the staff members of Screwbit Gaming's Ice Line and, and all you guys for coming out and watching. We really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can get this Kickstarter going. Uh, like I said before, you can just put it in Kickstarter, board blitz, or go to the link I put in chat. And thank you so much, everybody. And uh, goodbye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.